Some of it is like best practices, guidelines, ideas, right? And the financial management stuff falls a lot into these categories. When we're talking about valuing a company, there are not necessarily specific laws around how you must do this. If you are a service organization and you're selling your business, you must use the following valuation methodology. Okay, there's no law around that. So the question is then, okay, I'm a service organization. I need to create a valuation for this. Now you sit back. You can't go to your knowledge base and go, what valuation methodology must I use? Because there is no law for that. And this is where we as students, we get uncomfortable because we are used to compliance type thinking. What we want, we want a rule. We want a law. We want to know if it's service-based, I must use this. If it's manufacturing, I must use this. If it, we want some kind of rule, but that's not it. Your financial management stuff, most of those are tools. So I talk about it as rules versus tools. And these are massively different. Your costing methodologies, your valuation methodologies, stuff about strategic stuff, operational stuff, all of these are tools. And the idea is that you use these tools when you come across problems that need a solution and you're going, what is the best way to go about this? And you're looking at your tools and we go, I have this option, I have this option, I have this option. This will help trigger my thinking in this area. This can help. This is how other people do it. This is a commonly accepted good guideline to think about. It may or may not be relevant here. I have to sit and think about it and go, okay, that's what you're doing. You want to buy this business. You're asking me about the strategic things you should think about when you're buying this business. There is no predefined set of rules that says there are 10 things you have to think about that I can comply with. No, we've got a set of tools that says if you're looking at strategic stuff, you might want to think about this. You might want to think about that or that or that or that or that or that or that. And when you do, that's the trigger of the underlying concept. But now you've got to actually go, OK, so what would that look like here? Is that is that like, is that not relevant? So, you know, if I'm considering buying a company, I should think of the regulatory environment. That's the theory, right? That's the knowledge base is like from my financial management stuff, from my strategic thinking, I should think of um, regulatory environment. But there's no theory around that says, okay, this is what this looks like. So the regulatory environment, now you've got to sit with this and go, this is my client. I must think of the regulator environment, but I don't know how, like, what does that mean for my company? You know, for this particular, because I haven't seen this case study before. How do I connect these two? What should I be thinking of? Like, what stuff should I be thinking of here? And then you look at the solution and they go, well, in the regulator environment, there's, a, you know, if you're thinking of buying this company, you've got to understand or you've got to think about the fact that there would be a lot of barriers to entry in terms of the laws and regulations you have to comply with before you can open or run this business. You can imagine like uh, pharmaceuticals would be one thing. Anything where there are a lot of regulations around what you must and mustn't do, stuff that will impact people's health, gambling, for example, you know, things that are considered dangerous. Before you can open your company, there are a lot of regulations you have to comply with. And that's something you'd want to think about before buying the company because you're going like, that is a lot of money. Like, Do I know what these regulations are? Do the people that I'm planning on, on having in this business, do they know what these are? Is this stuff I want to deal with? Like, do I want to be spending my time making sure all these regulations are ticked off before I can even open the doors? 
But that's not a theory thing that you can say, okay, now I know that. Yvonne said that and then oh, that's not. And so therefore I will remember that because now the next thing you get a different type of company. And now the question is, okay, I should be thinking of regulator environment. I can't just say, oh, there's going to be barriers to entry because there might not be. I'm selling pencils now. I'm looking at a business that's buying pencils. There's no regulatory. There's no barriers to entry that, you know, that the regulators require. I can just open and sell. And so I must still be thinking of the regulatory environment. But what does that mean here? Like, is it still relevant? And how, how, how would it be different? Could it be different? Is there something I should be aware of? Like, this is a skill. And the reason that we struggle with this is because these are two totally different types of skills. Compliance-based discussions are a lot easier because you've got a predefined list of stuff that must be done and you can continually draw matches and go, should be doing this, you are doing that, should, 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 and you have all this out and it always looks the same. No matter what you're depreciating, that's how you depreciate it. Okay, fine. But if I'm talking about strategy, the shape of the discussion will change based on every variable, whether the company is big or small or new or old or owner managed or not, or service or, or manufacturing or listed or not or whatever, every characteristic about that business will have an impact on the stuff that you're discussing. And so the difference between discussions that are rule-based and discussions that are tool-based is that you've got to get used to working with the tool. 